This just in, guys, illegal immigrants take to the streets in New York City as they're saying that they're not leaving the United States. Mayor Adams earlier this week admitted the city has struggled to balance the overall rhetoric and balance its budget due to the influx of migrants. The pressure of finding billions of dollars instead of going to those needs that everyday New York is uh, uh, needed. Yet the administration addressed the fears many immigrants expressed ahead of Thursday's demonstration. I want to reassure people they do, they do not to need to self-deport. They do not need to hide, go in the shadows, uh, and that they can continue to use our... New York City sending 4,500 migrants back to Texas, offering free one-way plane and bus tickets to other states. So Abbott sends migrants to New York, then New York spends all this money, millions, to send them back to Texas. The Big Apple has spent... This just in, guys, illegal immigrants take to the streets in New York City as they say that they are not legal even the United States. And this has come uh, just as Donald Trump is vowing to carry out the largest deportation operation in U.S. history. Uh, very, very interesting um, uh, update here. So keeping in line with this, with his campaign promise to deport every illegal alien in the country, a total that ballooned to 15 million people after multiple record setting years of illegal immigration under the Biden administration, the president-elect Donald Trump's transition team is already drawing up plans for mass deportation. I'll be honest with you. I'd love to see what these plans are. I'd love to see how are they going to execute this? Um, I mean, is this going to be something like kind of crazy? Like, you know, um, like, I don't know. Like, I, I can't even I don't even know what to expect. It's, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. Um, but I do have confidence because Donald Trump is he's a human being at the end of the day. And I think that he will execute this in a way that. Uh, that will actually be surprisingly fair for uh, for for all who are affected, in my opinion. But of course, you know, only time will tell. On day one, Trump plans to reinstate a number of immigration executive orders that were rescinded by President Biden on his first day in January 2021. So what this sounds like is, number one, in order to stop a leak, in order to, to fix a flood, you have to first stop the leak. Right. So they're leaking into the country. So they're going to he's going to rescind the. Uh, executive orders that President Joe Biden uh, uh, denounced on his uh, entrance of the White House. Uh, President Donald Trump will be reinstating those. Among the orders that are planned by Donald Trump is the reintroduction of the popular Remain in Mexico policy, which required asylum seekers to wait outside the country while the asylum claims were processed. Concerns growing tonight among New York City's migrant community about what President-elect Trump's immigration policies could mean for them. Migrants, along with immigration advocates, gathered tonight in Foley Square where they expressed fear over Trump's campaign promise of mass deportations. Fox 5's Kendall Green has more. Hundreds of immigrant advocates packed into Foley Square to rally with signs and chants. No hate! No fear! And the spirit of resilience against an incoming Trump administration they've had battles with years before. While our movement experiences setbacks, we will not be silenced. Mayor Adams earlier this week admitted the city has struggled to balance the overall rhetoric and balance its budget due to the influx of migrants. The pressure of finding billions of dollars instead of going to those needs that everyday New York is uh, uh, needed. Yet the administration addressed the fears many immigrants expressed ahead of Thursday's demonstration. I want to reassure people they do, they do not to need to self-deport. They do not need to hide, go in the shadows, uh, and that they can continue to use our city services. You know, I, this is a very serious uh, situation here. I mean, from a, at least from a financial standpoint, because while I do believe that our borders need to be secure, the operation for uh, executing a mass deportation exercise in the United States, in my opinion, would be highly, highly expensive. I mean, uh, it, it, it makes me wonder, could it possibly be counterproductive or if the return on the investment, how long would it take for us to get our, our investment back? or at least see a return on our investment. But uh, it's going to be re really interesting. I do think that it, it it will absolutely have to boil down to, you know, is it humane? Um, is this a, I mean, how cost effective can they, can they execute on this process? It's going to get real interesting. And I think that they're going to have to really employ some very, very creative minds 
in order to carry out this operation. Members of the New York Immigration Coalition gathered to stand up for immigrants amid imminent threats posed by Trump's second presidency. We are here today to reaffirm our commitment to protect immigrants. Making note of Trump's expressed efforts to implement the largest mass deportation in the country's history. Down on crime in California and a major blow to soft on crime prosecutors across that state, California voters said yes, overwhelmingly, to Prop 36. It's a measure that will enact harsher penalties for retail theft, property crime and drug offenses. A major shift in the Golden State. Fox News contributor Steve Hilton. Joined Holy cow, ladies and gentlemen. Donald Trump almost won the state of California in the presidential election and the popular vote in the with the electoral vote. But got, guys, get this. Proposition 36. This is a major turnaround for the state of California. Guys, Donald Trump almost won California. And this this is on the back of the major devastating loss of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris was against Proposition 36. And it looks like California has said enough is enough. We've seen... Uh, the 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 viral videos on TikTok and X taking place in cities in California, like San Francisco, like Los Angeles. I mean, multiple different places in California where folks are just basically shoplifting. They're stealing. They're 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 doing whatever they want without without uh, concern of penalty or prosecution or jail time. I mean, this is a massive win for California and for America. Watch. Now, Steve, you're saying this is a victory for common sense. And I'll just add, of course, uh, Kamala Harris told us she wouldn't tell us which way she was voting on Prop 36. Oh, yeah. yeah, she didn't want to admit that basically her um, her rejection of Prop 40, Prop 36 uh, would, would would have looked bad on her because there is so much histor historical videos that show that she was actually against it. So she just couldn't speak about it. In fact, it actually proposition goes uh, proposition 36 goes against a previous law that she had passed. I mean, that was the final uh, humiliation, really, in her mm -hmm. campaign when she couldn't be straight with voters. Um, on something that was supported overwhelmingly. The polls showed before the election over 70% of Californians supported this move to undo the damage done by what she did when she was state attorney general. Mm -hmm. And now the actual vote turns out to be very much in line with that. It's overwhelming. And here's how I would put it. If you look at that result and a bunch of other ones here in California, it seems to me that the tide is turning in California. You have the yes vote on Proposition 36. You have an overwhelming defeat for George Gascon, the, the pro-crime far-left Soros-backed district attorney right here in Los Angeles. You also have less high profile, but incredibly important in Oakland. Really, the, the place in California which has really become the most dystopian in terms of the collapse of order on the streets. There's a recall there. They kicked out the DA there. They Whoa. Kicked the they kicked out the district attorney in Oakland, California, guys. What is happening on the West Coast here in America? In Oakland. And then you go beyond that. You look at the overall vote for President Trump. It seems to me, if I'm just looking at the data now, mm -hmm. but the largest shift towards Republicans of any state mm -hmm. was in California. Wow. Yeah. wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This, uh, this almost brings tears to my eyes because we've needed this level of reform for a very long time, guys. I mean, I don't know what happened after the uh, after the pandemic, but it's like, I mean, we've just seen lawlessness running rampant here in America. Oh, wait, that's right. Right after the pandemic, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden took office. OK, that explains it. Open up the borders, make prime, make crimes not punishable, make it so that there's, you know, free bail. There's there's no money required. There's no. So when there's no threat, when a, when authority has no power, well, what do you think that villains are going to do? What do you think that these these awful human beings are going to freaking do? They're going to take advantage of the system. Look, it's pathetic. It's sad. Uh, it's actually also insulting, and uh, you know, it, it's elitism, uh, elitism at the at the top, at the at the worst, at the most dramatic way. Uh, the reason the vote went the way it was. Uh, is because of the policies of Harris and Biden, because the woke has been destructive, because the the Green New Steel, which only benefits China, has been destructive, because socialism.
bankrupts every place that he goes. That's why uh, the vote was so dramatic. And in Miami-Dade County, by the way, Latinos understand what socialism is all about. We've seen this before. We smell it. We can un and we hear the rhetoric. But it's not only Miami-Dade County. Uh, Maria, you saw what happened on the border, right? In Star County, for example. I mean, it's amazing to me how uninformed these people in the media appear to be. I mean, can you not recognize the impact of a wide open border, even though you've you've probably reported the murders of American citizens at the hands of illegal migrants? Do you not understand the reckless spending and how it led to 40 year high inflation impacting so many people, including the Latino community? Where do they get misogyny? I mean, it's amazing to me. Well, the thing is, is that the mainstream media has a tendency to do this. They constantly they manufacture problems. I was watching Letitia James like, you know, talk about how Donald Trump is president now in spite of her best wishes. But the mainstream media, including Letitia James, and you see this repeatedly, they make up problems they make like for example she was saying how we're going to make sure that uh we're, we're going to be the guardians for the new yorkers to make sure that donald trump doesn't roll back your rights roll back your rights what are you smoking lady donald trump's not going to try to roll anybody's rights back and then she's over here talking about how donald trump's she's basically trying to manufacture and implant worries into the minds of New Yorkers about what Donald Trump is going to do to them. And, and Donald Trump has not threatened New Yorkers. Donald Trump himself is a New Yorker. And Donald Trump got a lot of love out of New York. So it's just unbelievable what these people try to do and how they try to do it and how they're routine, routinely blaming someone else for doing what they're, in fact, doing right in front of our very eyes. That they don't take it back to policy. That the policies Exactly. Yeah. But, there, but you just heard, you know, Morning Joe, and he's over there saying that it's misogyny. I mean, what, what planet is he on? Maria, because otherwise they have to admit, which they can't do, that all of their policies, everything they've been advocating for, everything that they believe in is not only wrong, it's destructive and the American people reject it. So they have to find some crazy thing to blame it on. Now, they are going absolutely nuts. The things you're saying are absolutely insane, but that's precisely why the American people no longer listens to them, and that's precisely why the American people rejected them, the policies they support, and overwhelmingly supported Donald Trump. And if you look at, in the state of Florida, in particular Miami-Dade County, it was a Republican sweep from top Ooh. to bottom because it's precisely rejecting these falsehoods, these lies, and those who pitch those lies who, by the way, will never be able to accept that they are dead wrong. Uh, and I would have to tell you, I have to be respectful, but they're either total idiots or it's a lot worse than that. Oh, God. Um, well, what I can say, ladies and gentlemen, is that I am thankful that even with all of the rigging and the cheating, that our system was resilient enough to overcome it. And Donald Trump walked away victorious uh, taking every single one of the swing states, literally winning every single one of the swing states, including Arizona just here recently. Uh, the American people have spoken. We don't want any more of this woke nonsense. We don't want communism here in America. We don't want socialism here in America. We don't want any of that. We want our borders to be secure again. We want our economy to be stronger. We want to reduce inflation to you know a, a manageable level, and we want to be prosperous. And we don't want the Federal Reserve, including Jerome Powell and the powers that be, looking at American prosperity and seeing it as a bad thing as it as it relates to America. On the streets in places like Bushwick, Brooklyn, and Jackson Heights, Queens is real. I am afraid, this man told us, I have children and grandchildren and I work hard. It would be unfair to deport us. New York is a sanctuary city where undocumented immigrants are largely shielded from immigration agents. Ladies and gentlemen, illegal immigrants are now protesting in the streets of New York in the wake of Donald Trump's victory over Kamala Harris in the 2024 presidential election and they're not happy let's just put it that way wow illegal aliens take to the streets following donald trump's victory we won't back down their illegal aliens are flooding the streets 
Aliens in New York City, where President-elect Donald Trump enjoyed historic gains on Tuesday's election, took to the streets in defiance of his victory on Saturday. Illegal aliens held up signs reading, we won't back down and we're not going back as they marched through the Big Apple. No to the anti-immigration laws, no to deportation, reads a sign held up by illegal aliens from Ecuador and Peru. I don't know what it's like to be in their shoes, but what I can say is it's kind of a ballsy to be saying these things. You're in a country illegally and yet feeling like you have the rights to say these things. Um, it's a it's a difficult situation. It's a tough pill to swallow. Um, so. So here we can see New York City. Uh, there are currently illegal immigrants marching on the streets of New York holding a sign that reads no to the anti-immigration laws, no to deportations. They shared that they are from Peru and Ecuador. Um, but wow. Yeah. This just in, guys, illegal immigrants take to the streets in New York City as they're saying that they're not leaving the United States. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be it's gonna be interesting to say the least. By the way, guys, if you appreciate the content, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.